Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 8, part of this playlist. And let me jump, which is Principal Components Analysis, and let me jump to today's topic, which is Explained Variance by Principal Components. Now, if we look at this illustration, and there's there's data, and it's spread out, and then I've, I've actually plotted the first two principal components. But what I want you to look at is look at this. It, let's stay along the Y1 axis and look at the length of this axis here. Now, if we were to rotate it up, it would probably go to here. So it would go from here to here. But this data point extends it. So the variance of the data associated with the first principal components is actually larger than the variance associated with Y1. Now let's look at Y2 axis. So it goes from here to up here. But if we look at the variance associated with this axis, the second principal components, it goes from here to say here. So it's actually shorter than the variance associated with Y2. Now it's kind of interesting. So the variance of Y1 is smaller than the variance of the first principal components. The variance of Y2 is larger than the variance of the second components. So I wonder, although, do they add up? You know, just because we rotate the data doesn't mean the variance has changed, right? Well, it turns out that they add up to the same number. The variance is associated with the principal components adds to the variance of the original variables. And let's put that more mathematical. Let's let y be a random p by 1 vector. So the variance of y has a variance covariance matrix of sigma. I'm going to call it sub y, which indicates it's the variance of our original variables, y. And let z be the principal components of y. Then the variance is associated with z, which we'll call sigma sub z, and has these. So lambda 1, lambda 2, all the way to lambda p. Notice that the principal components are not correlated. So all the covariances between the principal components is zero. Now what we said is if we add up these variances associated with the original variables, which means add the diagonals, which is actually the trace of that. So we add these diagonals. It actually equals the, the sum of these variables. So the trace of y which is the, the sum of the variances associated with the original data, which is just the sum of sigma i, I. You, some would say sigma i squared, it's the variance. That's equal to the sum of these lambdas, which is the sum of the variance of the principal components, which is really just the trace of sigma z. And that's what we were saying above, that the total population variance are the same. So the variance of our original variables is equal to the variance of the principal components. And so the variance of zi, the variance of the principal components, the sum of them, is actually the sum of the lambdas, the eigenvalues associated with that uh, original covariance matrix, sigma y. And each, so lambda 1 is a variance associated with the first principal components. Lambda 2 is a variance associated with the second principal components. And, and on down. And since these are ordered, that's the largest variance. So now we can look at what's called the explained variance. So we know the total variance, but how much of this total variance is attributed to the first principal component or the second or the sum of the first two? Well, we can look at that. So, and we call it explained variance. So the proportion of total variance, you know, in quotes, explained by the K, the principal components, is, is lambda k over the sum. And that's the proportion of the variance associated with the kth principal components. Now remember, these are the eigenvalues of the original variance covariance matrix, sigma y, and they're ordered largest to smallest. Now, one of the goals is we start with p variables, y1, y2, all the way to yp. We drive the p principal components. They're all uncorrelated. And then we find the first K principal components such that they account for 
you know, at least 80% of the total variance. Could be more, and that's a user-defined value, 80 plus. And then we keep those first K principal components, and we and we th and we throw them the rest out. You know, another way that we keep these, the or to know how many to keep, not only we look at the proportion of total variance explained, we also keep the ones, we can keep the principal components that have a variance greater than the mean variance. And so if you take the average of all these lambdas, which is the average variance, and we, and we may want to just keep the principal components that's greater than the average um, variance or lambda bar. Now, in the example below, I'll show you where using both of these is actually smart to think about. You know, don't use just one approach or the other. Now, the last P minus K variables are essentially dropped, right? But we're still keeping the original variables, you know, Y1 through Y2, because we have to use those to create the principal components. So in it, even though we're dropping variables or principal components, we're still using all the variables. And then I put in parentheses, at least until further investigation is conducted, because it may show that one of these variables is a linear combination of the others, totally dependent upon it, and we may end, want to end up dropping it. And that's where we learn from the smallest principal components. So if the principal components, the last one or two are zero, we look at them and we learn from them to see, right? Because th that means there's a variance associated with that linear combination. That means that it's highlighting the linear dependency. So it's we can learn to see if one of those is a linear combination of the others. And so what I said is, if, if an eigenvalue is really close to zero, that means the variance associated with that ith principal component is zero. And that means the linear combination has zero variance. And so one of those variables is actually dependent or linear combination of the others. That's a good way to learn that. And then you can, you really want to drop that one variable from your analysis. So the, so the EI may hi highlight linear dependencies. If we look at the um, components to, to learn from that, the, they're called principal components loadings. So let's look at an example. So the data were clacked collected by Bryson Barker from Brigham Young University as a preliminary study, a possible link between football helmets, designs, and next injuries. So six head measurements were made on each subject. There were 30 subjects in each of three groups, high school football players, college football players, and non-football players. There were six variables, head width, head circumference, front to back measurement, eye to the top of the head, ear to the top of the head, jaw width, Etc. So we're going to conduct a principal components analysis on these six variables. So a couple notes that I want to point out before we get to the R code is that the first two principal components account for greater than 85% of the total variance. That's the first note. And the variance of the first two principal components are both greater than the average variance. And I'm going to point it's to the scree plot for that. Now we consider keeping two principal components and removing the last four. And the key word is consider. Okay, so now let's look at the R code of this. So we read the data, and this is from an FTP site that we've used in previous videos. It's called T83 Football Dat. dat. Um, it doesn't come with the header, so we have to name it. And so I name it group, and then of course the six variables. And in principal components analysis, we deal with continuous variables. So group is not continuous, so we I want to remove it from this principal components analysis. And so in the column piece of this uh, data matrix, I'd say minus one. And it says get rid of the first column, keep the others. We could have put, you know, two through seven. Is that what it is? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we could have put two colon seven 
here, but it's easier to just say minus 1. Okay, so this is variance-covariance matrix of original data. Now, a couple notes here. Look at the variance of our second variable. Circumference, 3.5. The, the width is 0.44. Uh, front to back, I, you know, measurement is 0.55. Eye to the top of the head is 2.8. And ear to head is 0.9. The jaw measurement is 0.4. So clearly, the biggest one is their circumference, 3.5. It's almost a lot bigger than the others. Now, the fourth variable, I to the top of the head, the variance is 2.8, which is also kind of big. And I'm pointing those out mainly for the third video, but for this one also. So the principal components analysis, that we're going to use what's called the PR comp function. It's the principal components function of our data. Notice we get rid of the group variable, and it prints it out. Now, there's another one very common called PPRIN data. PRIN comp, I mean, principal components. This one uses what's called the singular value decomposition, and the other one uses the uh, uh, not, not that. Oh, dang it. Sing singular value and the, I'll think of it in a second. This one's considered more accurate. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so let's see what we got here. Um, it prints out the standard deviations associated with each principal component. The standard deviation is really the square root of the eigenvalue. So this the square root of the largest eigenvalue, which is the standard deviation of this first principal component, and so on. So when we look at the loadings of these principal components, principal component one, PC1, accounts for the the most variance of any other possible linear combination of these variables. And which variables contribute the most to this to this first principal components? And if you look at number seven and number four, so those are bigger than the others. So they account for most of the variance. And it makes sense because their original variances were largest, right? So it's, it makes sense that they account for it. And even the second principal component, it's the fourth and the second. But if we look at the third principal component, it's actually the ear to the top of the head accounts for most of the variance associated with the third principal component. Okay, so let's look at a summary of the PCA. Remember, we, st we stored our results from principal components analysis into a variable called PCA. And then when we type summary PCA, what it does is it what I like, it also, it reprints the standard deviations, but it prints the proportion of variance associated with each of those principal components. So 62, 23, 54. So accumulate, really we want to look at the accumulative. And the first two principal components count for 85% of the total variance. Now, if we go to three, it counts for 91% of the total variance. And then 94, 98, and one. So some would say, keep the first two. Some might say keep the first three. It accounts for 91%. I think that's a user decision. But let's look at the scree plot, which just visually shows what we're doing there. So here's the first principal components and the variance associated with it, the second. Now here's the average variance. So if you use the average, you know, your principal component has to be greater than the average variance, you'd go with the first two. But look at the scree plot. This is, you know, sort of a big drop, more vertical. And then once we get to here, then it's horizontal. So these, so four, five, and six clearly don't add much to the total variance. But this one does. There's still, it's going down pretty vertically. So I think that's a good argument to include the first three. But if there was a nice cogent argument to only include the first two, that would be okay too. So it's really a user-defined um, decision. Okay, so I need to stop here because we're at 14 minutes. And I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.